the number one question I get in my Discord server regarding noise gate is this. Francois, I set up my noise gate just like you explained to in your videos. How come I'm still hearing my keyboard and mouse noise through my microphone? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly set up a noise gate filter. I'm also going to explain to you how a noise gate actually functions so you know what you can and cannot do with a noise gate. So let's dive right in. So in this video, we will be covering the four things that make a noise gate function. Those four things are the threshold, the attack, the hold, and the release. Every noise gate filter has these four functions or commands that it operates by. And these are the things that we input into the noise gate in order to get what we want out of it. So I'm going to explain the functioning of those uh, commands, we'll call them, and then also I will explain what an audio signal looks like and how the noise gate uh, works in relation to an audio signal so you understand fully what you can and cannot do with a noise gate filter. For instance, if your keyboard noise or mouse noise is louder than your vocals, you will not be able to block it out with a noise gate filter because it does not function that way. It does not block out other things other than your voice. That is magic, not science. And the noise gate filter is very much applicable and scientific. So, yeah. The video that I just made is the only setup video you would ever need. It actually discusses all kinds of advanced filters that you would put on your microphone, such as compression, expander, limiters, so on and so forth. It is an hour long. If you're interested in checking that out, I highly suggest it. Um, but I do go into this uh, noise gate as well. The threshold of a noise gate. The threshold is the input that you are setting for that audio signal. So once the audio signal drops below this setting, the gate closes and audio is muted. The attack time is the speed in which the gate will open. So once that audio signal hits the threshold or comes back out of that threshold, it will set the speed in which the gate opens. The hold time is the amount of time the gate will stay open once the audio signal drops below the threshold. And then the release time is the amount of time it takes for the gate to be fully closed. Um, you can imagine an actual gate closing. Imagine audio traveling through a gate and a gate closing and the amount of time it takes for that gate to actually fully be closed is what we're setting with that release time. Same with the attack time. Um, imagine the amount of time it would take for a gate to open to allow the full audio to come through. You can set up a noise gate filter in several different applications. If you have an audio interface, if you use Equalizer APO, which is the application that I suggest using, it's what I use to process all the audio on my microphone. You can also apply a noise gate filter in OBS if you only want to apply a noise gate to your audio that's being heard by the stream or um, there's actually a noise gate filter in the Discord as well. If you go to the settings in the audio video section, there's the advanced input options or whatever. If you toggle that little slider in there, you can actually adjust that slider. The yellow side of that slider is actually audio that is going to be muted. Um, and that's actually a noise gate filter. Um, the only thing different about that noise gate filter and the filters that you set up um, in OBS or Equalizer APO is the one in Discord, you're not setting an attack time or a release time or a hold time. You're simply setting a threshold in which that gate will mute audio or not mute audio. It is an immediate attack and release noise gate filter that is built into Discord, but it is a function that works really well and a lot more people should be using it. The graph that you see in front of you is a graph of what an audio signal looks like. It's a graph that I made in Photoshop actually to help explain the functioning of a noise gate filter. Most of you are used to looking at an audio signal that looks something like this. This is an audio signal that would be recorded in Audacity 
or addition, something, uh, something along those lines. This is the same thing. On the left side of this graph, you have the amplitude or the signal strength. And on the bottom, you have time. So over time, as I'm speaking into my mic, it is developing an audio signal that looks something like this. I'm going to explain how a noise gate functions by using this graph. So on the left here, we have the output level of the audio itself. And then in the middle where you see that dash line and next to it, you see threshold. That is the threshold that we set with the noise gate filter. Every time the audio signal passes below that threshold, as you can tell, it has that yellow highlight on it. That yellow highlight is symbolizing muted audio. Everything that passes below that threshold in the audio signal, in that output signal, in the output volume, it is getting muted. So when that audio signal drops below a certain decibel rating, which decibel is the value that we use to measure volume, it gets muted. So when we're setting up a noise gate filter, what we're doing is setting a threshold at a certain decibel value in which we want to block out all the noise below that value. So what we're doing is blocking out unnecessary sounds or airy sounds. If you have a condenser mic, you'll usually be picking up a lot of like air sounds um, because condenser microphones are extremely sensitive. Let me try explaining with a different graph here. This graph is going to be a lot more e a lot more simple to understand because on the left it says the output volume and on the bottom it says time. So what you have is the level of volume on the left and on the bottom you have time. And as you speak into that microphone, it might get really loud at some points and really low at some points. The low points are going to be muted in the areas that are highlighted. And the audio that's going to be heard on the output is not highlighted. So if you're looking at that graph, what we're doing when we're setting the attack time and the release time is the following. When we're setting the attack time, that audio signal reaches that threshold, as in the audio signal is going upwards and getting louder. It's going to reach that threshold. We're setting the amount of time it takes for that gate to open and allow that signal to travel through that threshold. As it comes back down and hits that threshold again, we're setting the release time. What we're doing is setting how long it will take for that gate to then reclose itself so it cuts off that audio and mutes it. When we're setting the release time, we generally set it a bit longer than we would the attack time for the following reason. The release time, if we set a slower release time, it'll cause what is called a fading effect. It will gradually cut off that audio versus just cutting it off immediately. That way that your voice isn't choppy or the audio signal is not choppy. What happens is that it fades out and then when it opens up again, you can hear and then it fades out, so on and so forth. That way it's uh, it calls for a nice listening experience. So with that being said, you can fully understand how the noise gate functions. The last one would be the hold time. Now the hold time is after the attack but before the release the hold time sets the amount of time you want to hold that audio signal for before that release gets triggered so if you want to hold that audio signal for a little bit longer than you do before that gate starts to close then that is up to you by setting the hold time with that being said you know the four functions of a noise gate we're setting the threshold, the attack time, the release time, and the hold. With that being said, we're gonna jump into OBS. We're gonna set up a noise gate filter using the OBS noise gate filter. Whatever noise gate filter that you're setting it up, the logic is exactly the same. So let's dive in. All right, now looking at OBS, if you look at my audio mixer, you can see my microphone amongst the audio capture devices there. And what you see is the input of my microphone being displayed on that graph there. That graph goes from negative 60 decibels all the way up to zero decibels. You can do a variety of different filters 
this video, we're obviously setting up the noise gate. Now, OBS actually has two thresholds. So if you s click on this settings wheel here and click filters, what will pop up is um, a set of audio filters that you can apply to this audio source. What we're going to do is apply a noise gate filter. So if you hit the plus sign and go to noise gate, this will be your noise gate filter. What you have is a close threshold, open threshold, so two thresholds, attack time, hold time, and release time. The attack time, the hold time, and the release time is actually fairly good for the presets. I believe my attack time is set even faster than this at five milliseconds, um, but I'm sorry, anywhere from five to 25 milliseconds is fairly good. The hold time being 200 milliseconds will work just fine, and the release time being 150 milliseconds will work just fine. Now, what you can see is the open and closed threshold. The open threshold is set to negative 26 decibels. So the audio will open up when the input hits negative 26 decibels. So looking back at the graph here, negative 26 decibels lays right in there. The audio will not be heard until my microphone volume hits negative 26 decibels then that gate will open up and audio signal will travel through the same thing goes with the close threshold the close threshold is set to negative 32 decibels so as my audio signal leaves it will drop down to negative 32 decibels right there and the audio will be muted below that as we discussed earlier, the attack time is setting how quickly the gate will open and the release time is setting how, uh, how quickly the gate will close. What we want to do is try to eliminate unnecessary background noises as much as possible, our keyboard noise or our mouse noise. So if you go back to the filters, hit the eyeball, turn off the noise gate filter and clack on your keyboard. I'm having to hit pretty hard on my keyboard because I have a noise gate filter built into my equalizer APO, which is installed into my microphone's driver, but I was hitting on it pretty hard. You saw it coming uh, all the way up to negative 25 decibels. So what I want to do is turn on the eyeball again, go to negative 25 decibels on that open threshold. And what will happen is no signal will come through unless it's at negative 25 decibels. You can apply this same exact logic to remove keyboard noise for yourself. The only problem is this. You do not want your audio from your voice to be cut off. So you want to make sure that the open threshold is set low enough to where it does not damage your vocals, but it's set high enough to where it removes unnecessary sounds. Regardless if you're using OBS, Equalizer APO, an interface, an audio interface, regardless if you're using any of these applications, the logic of the noise gate filter works exactly the same. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something from this video, hit that like button. If you have any questions regarding audio, stream setup, graphic design, all that jazz, hop in my Discord server. We got a lot of smart kiddos in there. I'm also in there. Do check out my Patreon and see what I have to offer there. The first tier of my Patreon starts at $3. It's cheap as heck. So definitely give it a look. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.